name is Nastasia Ebony Swift. I am an artist living in Virginia Beach, but also working in Richmond, Virginia. So my dad, for some reason, thinks that I got any kind of creative energy from him, but I have not. I think he's more of the business side of my, of my brain, but my mom was an artist. Her portfolio from college was what I would look through when I was little. That was kind of like my introduction into art outside of like my coloring book or whatever I was doing as a kid and like understanding that because it was in this like enclosed thing that there was value to it. And then I got to VCU. I kind of, I learned about fiber outside of like the clothes that we wear. So like raw wool, a sponge and a felting needle. And what was cool about that was I had always wanted to make figurative sculpture and I never understood how I could approach it in my own way. Whenever I thought about sculptures as people, I thought about like classical sculptures in like stone and bronze. And I was like, I'm not interested in those materials. So like, how do I make contemporary sculpture my way? And I didn't think I could. So I kind of just like avoided three dimensional work um, and needle felting let me do it my way. I love the scale and the detail that goes into them, but I have been experimenting with scale, with life-size people and like these large heads that become performative. Wool has done this thing where it encourages me to think about all the different ways I could apply this material. And I think wool keeps giving me things that I may need from it. And that's an exciting place to be in as an artist because I feel like I'm not getting, like I don't get bored with like sitting here poking at this piece of wool because I know what it can become. I do needle felting, um, which is a specific kind of felting process. So needle felting is cool because you can work both two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally with it. This, which I think is awesome, is like really the only tool that's necessary. It has these little tiny barbs where my fingers are and they circle around like a little staircase. They're super tiny, you can feel them when you swipe down. And what happens, I like to describe those little barbs as hands and when you puncture the surface of the wool, those little hands start to grab small wool fibers in and they're tangling them. So when the wool starts pretty parallel in terms of like the strands of wool fibers and they're rolled into the start of a shape, the wool poking through however many times, I wish I could count the number of times I have to poke to get it to stay, they start to tangle. So they go from like that to that and then they compress and become a dense little object. The necessity of me to only have black dolls and understand the value of representation through those objects subconsciously plays a role in why I only make black dolls. And I think that the importance of valuing all complexions is the reason that I make black dolls in multiple complexions. And then their hair. I think what's cool about the wool is that it oftentimes can mimic a very specific kind of hair texture. It It's almost like it's this thread that gets woven among women, black women and women of color, like the way hair is a cultural like infusion in communities. It was a, a curated outdoor performance um, that took place in Richmond and they were visually there were eight black women and girls ranging in age and they had on these large felted masks so i knew i wanted the project to be all women because i was interested in my presence in like the space that i take up in richmond and the way that space speaks to my history and i wanted to put together a piece or a project that like invited other black girls and women to be a part of this like reflective moment to kind of dig deeper or understand the ways they take up space in that city. So I teach a felt your pet class and a drawing with wool class. It's cool to be in a space where adults are playing. 
with art. I think it loosens us up a little bit more and it makes it so that way the process, which is like multi-layered, it allows for that to be what we're focusing on and not like trying to make this perfect image. One of the cool things about all of those felting classes is that people, they enjoy the fact that it's something that can be done in three hours and they don't necessarily need multiple classes to keep understanding or to finish it. So to like go into something, learn a new process and like leave, I think it's great. And as much as like a week long class feels good or even a two week class, like so to know that you can learn something new in three hours, I think a lot of people enjoy. It's just, it's a fun material to get your fingers in. And sometimes it's very therapeutic. Like there's something about poking or maybe stabbing, whatever people want to call it, I guess, depending on their mood, <laughs> that feels really good. So it just becomes this meditative thing of, of repeating this gesture of moving your wrist up and down and poking into the surface of something else. My class is usually with like chatter and laughter. At some point it gets quiet and all you hear is like crunching. And for some reason that sounds really nice. <laughs>